Hey, what's going on, guys? I'm going to talk to you tonight about Ethiopia in the Korean War. What's going on, YouTubers? Okay, Ethiopia was the only African country to send ground troops to the Korean War. Okay, South Africa sent soldiers. Uh, they were all Air Force. Ethiopia was the only African country in the Korean War to send ground soldiers. Okay? Uh, the emperor of Ethiopia at the time was a guy by the name of Haile Selassie. Okay, and the soldiers that came, they were to the Korean War, the Ethiopian soldiers that came, they were personal bodyguards of Haile Selassie. So these soldiers were already highly trained, um, but also before um, they came to Korea, they did eight months of training in the mountainous terrain of Ethiopia. They mainly learned how to do combat patrol and how to ambush. Okay, and they the terrain of Ethiopia and South Korea are very similar, so they were well prepared going before they got to Korea. They were prepared before they got there. And they are, went, they set sail from a U.S. transport ship. It was a United States transport ship called General McCrea. Uh, the U.S. brought the Ethiopian soldiers to Korea. Uh, they left April 16th, 1951. They arrived in Korea May 7th, 1951. Okay? And before they left Ethiopia, the emperor of Ethiopia at the time, excuse me, Haile Selassie, he told the soldiers. He gave them seven battalion combat flags, and it was a big dishonor to for the enemy to take the battalion combat flag, and not one of those battalion combat flags were taken by the enemy. The Ethiopian soldiers kept all of them and returned them to Emperor Haile Selassie. That's how tough and efficient these soldiers were. Okay, um, They sent a battalion. It was three different battalions, one battalion each tour, though. One battalion each time. And the battalion's name was called the Cagnu Battalion. The first battalion commander was a guy by the name of Lieutenant Colonel Tashom Irgetu. He was a very effective battalion commander. Okay, and God bless Tashom Irgetu. He was awarded a lot of medals, excuse me, from the United States and South Korean government. And one of the first missions that the Ethiopian soldiers had was defending Hill 1073 against communist invasion, and they did very well. Okay, and uh, Second Lieutenant Gabrizas. He, during that time, went out and raided a lot of Chinese soldiers um, who were on neighboring hills or neighboring ridges. And he was successful in doing that. He was an effective platoon leader. Also, um, not one Ethiopian soldier was ever taken prisoner of war. They were the only country to have that honor. And also, they not one e dead Ethiopian soldier was left behind. Their men... They brought their dead back to them to base, and they returned them to Ethiopia to be buried in their home country. And, okay, we talked about that. Okay, also, they, all right, where, where they really shine was taking a hill called Hill 600, and a platoon leader by the name of First Lieutenant Waldus Sadik Tesfe. He told the men he commanded to take cover that the Chinese were shooting at him. The Chinese were shooting at him. So he went to the bunkers near Hill 600, and he destroyed those bunkers single-handedly with a bunch of hand grenades. Because of this heroic action, he was awarded the Bronze Star by the U.S. government. That's a very high decoration to get, um, by the way. So God bless him. God bless him for what he, God bless him for what he did. And this is just some of this is just some of the many things that the Ethiopian that the Ethiopian soldiers did and this was the hill six hill 600 was near um, the Samyon area and the Samyon area controlled a lot of supply routes that the United Nations wanted to have and that the enemy wanted to have ultimately the United Nations won the battle of the Samyon area a lot of it was thanks to the Ethiopian soldiers um, in the Samyon area. They had a lot of support from the US artillery division company K32 32nd artillery regiment they were able to radio that artillery regiment anytime they needed them, and the artillery regiment provided effective fire for the Ethi for the Ethiopian soldiers. Now, there was at one point during that time that the Ethiopian soldiers had to withdraw. They they withdrew and they took a hill, and Lemamora manned the machine gun single handedly, so the rest of the all the Ethiopian soldiers could withdraw. So he manned that machine gun by himself to keep the invading Chinese soldiers away from him. That's how he was Corporal Lemamora. That was his name. Also, um, that, sorry, 
just got a little sidetracked right there, but that is the bravery and the tenacity and the determination that the Ethiopian soldiers had. They fought against the Chinese and North Koreans 253 times. They won all 253 times. They were the only country that fought under the UN flag to always win against the Chinese and North Koreans. No other country was able to do that except for Ethiopia. So God bless them. Um, unfortunately, the reason we don't know a lot about them is because in 1974, a Marxist by the name of Mingut Zuhaili Mariam came to power and he implemented a policy called Red Terror. And he denied that Ethiopia ever helped South Korea in the Korean War. He killed many of the veterans of um, the Korean War. And uh, some of them who survived had to really go into hiding. And this Red Terror lasted from 1974 to 1991 and he killed as many as 500,000 Ethiopian citizens. So this is why it's taking a long but steady time to learn about the Ethiopian soldiers and their accomplishments. So, and America largely supported the Ethiopian soldiers. They gave the Ethiopian soldiers a lot of medals. When the Ethiopian soldiers arrived in South Korea, uh, the U.S. Ambassador to South Korea, John J. Musio, as well as the President of South Korea, Sung Man Rhee, welcomed the Ethiopian soldiers with open arms. And Sung Man Rhee gave uh, the battalion commander, the Lieutenant Colonel Tashomi Ritu, he gave them a bouquet of flowers, and that was a huge honor for when, at the time when South Korean gave somebody that, that, that was a huge honor. So, anyway, I hope everybody's doing well. God bless the brave Ethiopian soldiers that fought in the Korean War. They did amazing things. Just uh, 121 Ethiopian soldiers were killed, 536 were wounded. And there have been conflicting numbers, whether it was 121 Ethiopian soldiers or 122. Um, but definitely 536 were wounded and at least 120 were killed. And 3, a total of 3,158 Ethiopian soldiers served in the Korean War. So, and also Emperor Haile Selassie donated a tree to the UN Memorial Cemetery in Busan. That tree stands there to this day and it was given to us by His Majesty Haile Selassie. And he was committed to helping South Korea in the Korean War, and also he, before the Korean War, Ethiopia donated $100,000 of medical supplies and assistance to the countries that were fighting for South Korea in the Korean War at the time. So, hope everybody's doing well. Take care. God bless, and bye-bye. Bye-bye.